You don't cut this or anything. This goes. No. Oh, no, we're, oh, we're we'll, just... we'll cut it. If, we'll cut it if there's something said that we're like, oh, right. we probably shouldn't put that in. Yeah, it does <laughs> say live in the top corner there. It makes me <laughs> yeah, I know. Nervous. Very nervous. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. It could be actually streaming right now. Like we've had we've had episodes where we've literally cut out slabs of twenty five minutes. <laughs> like, we, it, just, it had to go. We went redid the whole show. Remember, we did the show. Yeah. And we're like, that was shit ass. We just did it all again. All right, welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the Social Distance Podcast. We we have a very special episode today. We have we have Luke Durbridge and Matt Heyman joining us to talk all things Perry Bay. We dissect what was a very muddy day on Sunday, a very muddy day in hell. Um, we try to be uh, do our best at being journalists, but we don't have a run sheet. We don't have questions prepared, so stay tuned. Uh, and Durbo reveals a very funny T-shirt. <laughs> Durbo <laughs> reveals a very funny T-shirt. Enjoy the show. Like, share, subscribe. Love you all. Peace out. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not prepared for this. This is going to be a good one. I can sense it. Uh, let's get ready. And we're fucking G. Are we? Ah. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> well, you can't impeach somebody that's doing a great job. From Suit Chin, Kendo Kerr. Bruce, Bruce Gigolo. Bruce Gigolo. <laughs> George Bennett, you deserve this, big fella. What's that salute? <laughs> he's, he's, he's put the finger straight through the one pie. We hmm. try and create a comfortable environment. There's no bullshit. There's just so many of them, aren't there? They're just... <laughs> Don't like it. Nelson, be proud. Yeah, baby. Welcome back, guys. Here we are. 6th of October. That means we're three days into the off-season. So in typical social distance podcast style, I'm fucking hung. My <laughs> head feels like it's in a vice. I spent all morning deleting embarrassing content off our Instagram page, but we're here. We are here, the first episode of the off-season, and it's off the back of an epic Paraloo Bay and we've got two men who need no introduction, Matt Heyman and Luke Durbridge, here to share some war stories about the weekend with us. How are you doing, Jonesy? Oh, good. I thought we had a good conversation last night on uh, WhatsApp and then went to recap that conversation straight off the gun and you're like, oh, no, it's, oh I don't remember chatting to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> nah, 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 I'm, dr- I'm drumming it up. I'm drumming it up. You've deserved it, mate. It's been a bloody long year, but geez, the boys at the bottom of the screen as well. Shit, you'd be glad that Rue Bay's done and dusted, particularly you, Durbo. Yeah, mate. Uh, fuck me, it was a, uh, it was a, <laughs> it was a big, it was a big one, wasn't it? Yeah. He's Jesus. coming hot <laughs> <laughs> straight off the bat. <laughs> Swear jar. Um, I was just nowhere else to describe it. It was, it was pretty gnarly. Um, yeah, we, um, I didn't crash, so like I said, it's a bit of a victory in the end, and. Um, but, yeah, it was definitely one for the ages, uh, 20 years since the last time it rained. So I was about 10 years old, so I definitely wasn't there for that. And um, But, uh, yeah, no, it, was, it, was, it was a big weekend. So it was, a, it was a hard way to finish the season, I'll tell you that. Do you get worried, like, when you race in mud? Like, I remember that famous day when I think you got really crooked. Um, was it Tour Langkawi when it was a real muddy day and there was bacteria in the mud? Is that Roubaix mud, the mud that smells like cow shit, or is it's not too bad? I don't know. I think it's the least pretty... of your worries, eh? At least of your yeah. worries in Roubaix. Like, you probably could get crook from it, but, like, you know, it's like I said, there's a lot, lot of uh, other things that can go wrong, probably a little bit worse than just getting a crook gut. So uh, I had a few Belgian beers after the race to sort of kill anything in there. So, uh... <laughs> Although the eyes... The eyes weren't looking that good. A bit of pink eye there for a while. Wasn't yeah, it? my eyes are looking a bit better now. Um, yeah, you me, yeah, no, it's all right. Um, I couldn't see. My eyes were so bad. I lost my glasses on the second sector. Um, but actually saying that, yeah, I just pulled a bit of dirt out there right now. I'm just waking up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely um, – it was just uh, like a film like on your eyes. It was just unbelievable. Like I, I didn't matter what you did. I just couldn't clean them. Yeah, so you couldn't do it either way. Like, you couldn't wear glasses and you couldn't no. not wear glasses, but you had to get across the cobble somehow. Like, there's obviously some pretty epic images out there. Like, from, oh, yeah. there's one from Emil Lippens from uh, Trek. Did you see that photo? He, I think he was the last finisher within the time cut. And uh, there's a big photo expo of him on Instagram or somewhere. 
and like you can't recognize it. it's just literally like the masked man and then you just got these little eyeballs in there that are just bloodshot red because i thought of dirt as well it was it was fucking something else eh? and like the <clears throat> when i went up there last week i've had still had a had a you know problems with my wrist throughout the whole year so i wasn't entirely sure what i was going to be able to do um or how far i was going to be able to go on the cobbles and so the plan i spoke maddie was there, there as our director and we spoke on saturday morning and and the plan was i was just going to go as far as i possibly could you know and the reason i wanted to go as far as i could was because it was Rue bay for starters like you don't parry bay is something special and it's any year anytime you go to parry bay even just like the, the days leading up to it you know all the teams out doing recons all the cycling journalists out there taking photos you're in this like no offense to the northern French French people, but you're in this shitty part of France, and it's like, yeah, no offense taken. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, fair call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shitty, shitty as fuck. Not too bad. Oh, so move on. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but it just fe- it just feels like there's something happening, you know, that weekend, like those days. It just feels like there's something happening. And then when we saw the weather forecast, and we saw the women's race the day before, which on another note was spectacular as well. Um, I was like, I have to do this wet rebate. I don't know what's wrong with me. Am I crazy or what? But I have to I have to go out there and slip and slide and crash and land on the mud and land in the puddle. I have to do this. It's been 20 years. It might not be another. Who knows when the next one's going to be? And I, April. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it doesn't wait too long. <laughs> like, it's something just like that's in your bloodstream. Or, and, you know, I, I know that you share this this passion, Matty, or, you you know, you probably multiply this passion and you too, too, but, Dubai, but there's something about Roubaix that no matter what is happening, how you're feeling, whether you're sick, injured, tired, motivated, unmotivated, all of a sudden you get through Bay and this thing f- flicks in your heart, I think, more than your head, and you go, fuck, I've, I've got to go onto those stones, you know? Do you agree, 100%. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, you know, it's a little bit different. Flanders, we're kind of racing up there all the time. We're, we're on those roads. And then, and then yeah, it's just pretty mythical to go through Arenberg. And, um, and yeah, especially, I mean, I was pretty nervous the night before knowing that it was going to be wet, nervous for you guys. And also knowing that, you know, outside of a stage of the Tour de France, no one had been on wet cobbles for 20 years and nobody had a real true sense of what it was going to be like. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, it remains pretty special for me. Were, were uh, you driving, Matty, or did you have someone else? No, nah, I had Big Lorenzo driving. He was, he was, uh, <laughs> he was uh, wetting a few people. No, <laughs> in his defence, in his defence, the uh, the car you cannot drive just down the cobbles, and and you need to, uh, otherwise it bottoms out in that the ridge yeah. in the top. So we have bash plates under the car, but the car isn't isn't made any higher. We didn't have any extra suspension or anything. So you need to leave one wheel on the top of the ridge of the cobbles and the other wheel on the side, and also to let the the lane on the left hand side open for the riders. But um, yeah, I think it was uh, Rusty came up, Gregory Rust from Trek, and just said, "You've just actually because his his right hand wheel was just always in the puddles, and it was sending like just." just like a, a shower of mud across and he went past this vip area with these all these people in white pants and shirts and they would have been they would have been 25 meters away from the course and and rusty could not stop laughing that he said they were just covered in head to toe in manure and shit and side of the road so uh it was uh i think it, by about half race he was doing it on purpose to be honest but, uh, oh he's brutal yeah. Yeah, yeah. He wouldn't give a shit too. Like no, those no. guys would be like, oh sorry, like the red <laughs> <just, laughs> <laughs> <laughs> down just like no. loving it. No. Uh, uh, there was, there was a car. reason. There was a reason. We had to keep the car off the off from bottoming out, but I also mm. think he, he found a couple of big puddles. Yeah, when you go up into the grass and you you almost <laughs> clean <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> Through the barbecue set. <laughs> Watch out. Yeah, I'm not driving on the cobbles, eh? <laughs> we only we only had one car in the race. Well, you know, one one kind sports rigorous car, yeah, kind of. So we had Heyman as the head BS, like calling the shots, and then Lorenzo driving the car for him. And then after a while, like, Derby went in the breakaway of like 30 guys went away about 30, 30 k before the first sector or 40 k. I can't remember when it was exactly. But before the first sector, this group of 30 riders went away. We had Durbo in there. We had Rob Stannard in there. And Durbo, who was 
was one of our leaders um we're our main leader for the right for the race and then at, at a certain point all the all the cars team cars started coming past the peloton to go and drive behind the breakaway riders they had a two minute gap at this point and i never saw Heyman go past and then uh and then i could hear him on the radio and i was like i never saw lorenzo and maddie go past but i assume that he they, they must be at Durbo now, like no, they're in the puddles. They'd, they'd, like, that'd, be, that'd be crazy not to be servicing Durbo now in the cobble section, driving behind us. Anyway, we get to the first sector. It goes into about ten thousand groups, like straight away crashes, people slipping, sliding everywhere. And I'm in a group of twenty guys, thirty guys or something. And after about five or six sectors, by this point, I'm mate, I'm not even in the same radio service as Durbo. I'm so far behind Durbo at this point, you know, ten minutes behind him probably. And I come off the sector and I turn left. So we turn left and I look to see if there's any more riders coming on the cobbles. And there's my team car there with all the bikes on the roof. And I'm like, what the fuck is Maddie doing? Like, he is, is he backing me or what? Like, maybe, maybe, maybe he's backing me for you know, to come back here. On the way in. And so I like turn around and I have a look back and it was just our team physio and our, one of our team mechanics just driving the other car just in the race. Like, hey boys! <laughs> yeah, I had to make a call. I had to make a quick call, and uh, yeah, we're we're, we're uh, you know flexible multitaskers. Okay. How much how much do the mechanics shit themselves, Manny, for Roubaix? Because I mean, you look at some of the horror stories of punches, and you know, Derby had mechanicals and that as well. But mechanics must be shitting themselves going into the race. Yeah, I think so. I think. Uh... Yeah, they know more chance than not that they're going to have issues. And um, normally they're like a good race for a mechanic is one where they never get out of the car and there's a good chance you're going to get out of the car at Roubaix. So, yeah, pretty pretty uh, stressful day for them. And it starts a, a week out. Um, so, yeah, we uh, had a few incidents as we were running around in the mud, uh, changing wheels. Um, Durbo. I mean, we we had a few radio in, uh, problems too. I mean, I didn't even hear Durbo's puncher his first one, which meant we were pretty slow getting him in a spare bike there. So it's uh it's pretty full on. And I mean, there's times too. I mean, there was a whole middle section of the race there where we just had no idea where where everybody was. Um, I don't think the race knew. I mean, I'd no. be calling I'd be calling for trackers too, because um, it just doesn't seem right that in this day and age I've got you know, six bike riders in the race and I've no idea if one of them's in the ditch. I could drive past them. I, I don't know where they are. Um, and and the race radio was pretty much just saying there's two leaders and then there's some groups. I didn't know where Rob was. I didn't know where Durbo was. And and to be fair to the race radio, I mean, they're only one car and they're behind whatever group they're behind and, and they can't see everything. So there was about, yeah, probably 40 minutes there where, where we really just had no idea. No internet, couldn't check up on the TV, couldn't check up on pro cycling stats and just had no idea where anyone was. So pretty stressful day for everyone. Well, there was a couple of TV motos that binned it. There was yeah. one live with the coverage and you see the camera just go <laughs> pulled to the ground. There's just people going past with the cameraman on the ground. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. Did you see the footage of the uh, AG2R car going around the corner? Yeah, yeah. yeah. into the ditch. So, yeah. It was, was great, unbelievable. Great footage he was looking, looking for a puddle. He was looking yeah. for puddles, I think. <laughs> yeah, that was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> have, you got, have you got a run sheet or anything? No, I, just thought, I just thought I'd leave it up to Bill. It's like, I've got a few questions here I can scroll through if you want. I thought, oh, we'll see how Bill's goes here, sticking it all together. And then you get that slow pause, and the brain's like, you can see Bill's going, oh, something will come to me, something will come to me. Well, got nothing. <laughs> what are you talking I'll about? Tell you what, I'll tell you what I do have. Is I've got Dubo's clothes. He left his... Derbo left his Paru Bay cycling kit in a plastic bag in my bike bag, and we both forgot. We flew back from um, Brussels on Monday morning. Well, that'd, that'd have a good pain to it. And we both forgot, and I got home and un un unzipped my bike bag, and I was like, oh, fuck, it's Derbo's clothes. So I pulled him out, and I was, I knew that Derbo, Derbo, we just got to town, and Derbo had to rush off for a meeting and stuff. So I was like, I'm not going to see him till, until tomorrow. I can't, as much as I'd love to, I can't let these – Wet, dirty cycling kit sit in a plastic bag for another 24 hours. I'll have mice in my house. Oh, if I do yeah. that. So I had to, like, I got them out and gave them, put them in the bath and 
gave Dubo's kit the full wash, hand washed, oh, Harry Bay oh, mud off. Oh, man. Dirtied my bath. And then I put them in the washing machine. I knew he wanted to keep them. I knew he wanted to keep his shirt with the numbers on. So I left the numbers on, but they're sticking oh. up so that they no longer exist. Um, <laughs> Don't and, tell my mum that. I told you that, buddy. <laughs> Because uh, my my mum my mum said uh, they've got this jersey at home from 2016 Roubaix when you won oh no 17 um, and uh, they've got it framed this jersey it's like the filth from Roubaix and it's framed I didn't finish 2017 I crashed <laughs> out and I was in an ambulance like so every time I look at the the the, the, the jersey I'm like well, what the hell is that doing up there like it's, it's, a, it's a bad memory. Like, ah, oh, but we were there. It was a special day. We were there. But I'm like, yeah, but it was a shit race. And I don't want to look at that jersey go, yeah, in 17, that ambulance ride was fantastic. <laughs> so, Great the pool room. I said, mum's rang me the night before. She's like, look, you got you, you, one thing you have to finish because, you know, I need, I need you can put, you can take that jersey down that you don't like and you can put a new one in there. Just make sure you keep all the mud on it. <laughs> So oh no! Bills has no. done. Bills has done a really good. You know, been a real good mate. Just cleaning my jersey. You know, taking the taking numbers the numbers off. off. <laughs> <laughs> and Three mum's like, mum's like, oh, I was talking to her yesterday, and she was pissed. She was so pissed. <laughs> but in, def- in defence to me, like, there's no way you're getting a muddy Perry Bay or muddy anything through Australian biosecurity. No, you know, no, no, no you'd, that's you'd be true. on Channel Nine. <laughs> security. Exactly. I, I actually, there is one security guard in Australia that I come back from, and he knows me. And every and he, a couple, I've had him twice, and he's just like back for the off season, Luke. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And he's like straight through, and I'm just like, yeah. okay. So this is what happened twice. So maybe if I get that guy, I'm straight through. You know, with contraband from uh, Paris Bay, but yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. You were talking about stories about a uh, can't track riders. I remember the first weekend of the classics where you do the Het Newsblad and um, um what were the other ones? Yeah, keep going, keep trying. Uh, I can't remember the <laughs> name. Jonesy. Of the it's the same, we it's love, the same we... race, Jonesy. You've just it's <laughs> um, um, and Het, Het Newsblad is the same. Yeah, it's the same. And race. then Sunday yeah. is Sunday Kern is. Brussel Kern. Yeah, oh, there you go. Oh man, twenty twelve first. Ever, you know, big classics for Green Edge, and we lost fucking Alan Davis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Three hours. He, he went MIA. He, he was piped out the ass. I think Steve was the director. And he's like, ah, fuck, we've, we've <laughs> fucking lost Albie. No, like, he rolled up to the bus. He was fucking steaming. He's fucking out, Steve. I was fucking on the bloody radio. I'm taking a left turn. I'm fucking in the middle of nowhere. Three hours. First weekend. Didn't you oh. have a story? Didn't you have a story about trying to find Kerner? Me? Kerner? Yeah, yeah. You were asking, stopping in at shops, trying to find. Yeah, them. I got lost my first ever Kerner in 2010. It was uh, <laughs> we were talking about it actually on the bus the other day at the hotel, weren't we? Like yeah. it was the most feral weather. Like I said, it was minus six, and then Hayden reminded me it was like three degrees. But it felt like minus, <laughs> it felt like minus six. And then, <laughs> but it was fucking pissing rain, super windy, and there was like 26 or 27 finishes. Of what Maddie was one of them, and uh, um, Jer- like it was so cold. Jeremy Hunt was in the front group with like five k to go and stopped, just climbed off his bike, couldn't ride anymore. It was so cold. And I, it was my first pro race actually. And we started, and I had this rain jacket on that was about five times too big for me, it's flapping in the wind, and like <laughs> minus minus six and crossing. And we <laughs> we rolled out of the neutral zone, and the and the race start, and I just went Poof, straight at the ass. Like I got I got dropped after seven k. And then I, I was like, I'm out of the race. I can't come back. I've got this jacket on. Like, and I'm chasing, chasing, chasing. And then eventually this train um, barriers went down. There's a train coming. So the bunch got stopped. So I came back on, got back in the bunch. I was like, oh, hope no one saw that. Here I am. <laughs> so then I like, took my rain jacket off. And then the train tracks went up. And we, the race started again. And we went uphill. And I went straight out of the ass. It's gone. <laughs> so then I was like, I can't. What am I going to do? Like I said, oh, I've only done 15K or something at this point. I'll just ride back there. Kerner, right back where the bus is. So I flipped it, and mate, this is this weather is hard to explain, but it was horrible, horrible, horrible. People were getting in, like, there's a photo of Tom Boonan standing in some old lady's house because there's no room in the, in the sag wagons anymore. They were full. Teams had bloody bike riders from all different teams in their cars and bikes on the roofs, and everyone trying to get home in any way other than riding the bike. And I'm trying to get back to Kerner, which is just down the road, but I've taken a wrong turn as well, and I am honestly out there for like two hours. 
trying to find this little Belgian village. And I had no idea where I'd be, where I was. I didn't like, I had never been there either. Like nowadays, you might be able to find your way, or you see a town you recognize. I had no idea. And I literally stopped in this little village and went into the, the Nightwing, Nightwinkle store and uh, was just like, where, where's Kerner? How do I get there? And like, this is the day before, like before Garmin's and things. And I was out there for like two hours. And by the time I got back to the, to the house, um, to where we we're at Dirk DeMolk's brother's house, actually. I got back there. The rest of the team was already back in there as well. So I like I almost looked better than them, but <laughs> I'd been dropped considerably earlier. <laughs> I uh, I do want to raise one thing about the Roubaix race. It could be a bit controversial, but like hats off to the winner, Sonny Colbrelli. Well done, great win, mm-hmm. first Roubaix. I do want to pick a bit of a bone. I thought that the post race celebrations, obviously, Ooh. you Ooh. win you win Roubaix. I get it, massive moment. I get it. But he was rolling around on the grass. Like I give it 30 seconds to a minute for it to sink in, celebrate or whatever. This went on for five minutes. This was the same reaction if I saw my mum get shot at point blank range. Like <laughs> here's I, a good one. Here's a good one. For I you, almost I almost felt like saying, I'll give you that. <laughs> but when it kept going and he kept rolling and he kept screaming and the cameras are still there, I thought, now you're just taking the piss, mate. Fucking time out. Time out. Dust yourself off. Calm down. I get you've won Roubaix against the first one, but I felt it went on a bit too long. Like, share, subscribe. Leave your comments below. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just thought I, it's just my gut uh, shot. So um, I might have got a text from my wife while that was happening, and she said, bit over the top. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, anyway. And then to follow on to that, I got contacted yesterday afternoon by a journalist in Belgium from the, um, like the ABC radio, Mm. um, Radio One in Belgium. And today at 10 o'clock, they did a whole themed hour on their radio show about screaming. So he came and interviewed me yesterday and I had a 20 minute segment on Belgian radio about Sonny Crobrell's Cobrelli's uh, scream at the finish line. So, oh, well, there you we, go. There we go. It, it 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 did actually ring true with a lot of people. That uh, so, we sat down. He went through his scream. He went through my scream. We talked about screaming as a rider, duh, 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 and, and it went out today. He, he sounded like a he sounded like a wounded goat. Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. come on, boys. Yeah. Well, well, like... I didn't say that on Belgian radio. No. Cut that. <laughs> but but, but Rube is such a weird race, like, and that's such an epic addition, right? Um, you've got mud all over your face. Derba, how much of it is you have to give five minutes to let the camera guys just get their get their shots? Is there any part <laughs> I, of that? I, yeah, you know, you've seen my famous one. I've got like the worst <laughs> face that ever existed after Rube. Up, you know, it's slow, it up. It's slow-mo. It's just we like might, we, we might use that photo. Yeah, it's photo. just... Some of my Bucks party, Mitch used that as my face, you know, like as a shirt. It's it's pretty bad, actually. Um, actually, I'll, I'll I've, say, I've actually got it here. I'll go get it. It's bloody funny. And yeah, it's it. Your face this year wasn't far off, to be honest. Nah. <laughs> pretty swollen. <laughs> you, you had the root It was like, terrible. It was terrible. Everyone was but pretty the, swollen uh, and pretty. I will say, like, after the state. Hmm. I will say, your internet shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just la- I laid down and I closed my eyes for a second and I could have just I could have just gone to sleep. There was that much stress and that much like just that whole day was just so hard from the from the get go that you just your body was like okay I've I've just had enough stimulus for the day now um, you've just pushed me to the edge um, so I just I didn't it wasn't dramatic it wasn't screaming or anything because I just rolled in just put my bike down sat on the grass laid down for a second and I was just like and the body was like. And I'm out. <laughs> it was like I was so far. So um, it wouldn't have the same effect there. if you did like a was... Colbrelli scream. It wouldn't have the same effect. People would have been like, "Here we go, here, boys. call the this medic." Is the, this is the shirt. I'll get it up for you. Let me just put it this right here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, I've got this fucking. There we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's five bucks Wait, and I'll cry if I want to. Look at that. That's a head for you, isn't it? It's so bad. So the good. helmet hair. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> I remember those t-shirts. Um, 
I, I want to talk. I want to ask both of you guys. Like, you're both two of the most passionate Australians, at least, of when it comes to Parry Bay. You know, over in Belgium, and, and I, I'd question and anyone that's more passionate. <laughs> I know, yeah. maybe. I know. I know. I know. It's pretty passionate. Yeah. There's some very, yeah, very passionate people. Very, very passionate people about Roubaix, but you two particularly, as we know. I want to know, you both got different stories. How did how did the passion come about? Like, I think for you, Durbo, you you had a lot of like, the connection through Mitch. Mitch had already been doing a lot of um, racing in Belgium and stuff, and you obviously been close friends with him. You got sort of involved in the romantic side of it all through him. But Heyman, I guess you have to tell us, but <clears throat> how did well, it come about to, to be so Durbo passionate about well, either, right? Let's fight for it. it first. It's like Squid Game. <laughs> fight for it. <laughs> um, I, I guess first for, for me was um, I remember watching Stewie's win. Um, I had this like dodgy Russian feed on the laptop, on, on the computer back home, and I stayed up and I sort of just started getting into cycling and uh, I was watching this race because I only really televised Rue Bay and the Tour de France back home, you know, like it was only those sort of two races that really got full time coverage. Um, all the other races didn't really exist. So, uh, we uh, I watched that and I remember Stewie winning and uh, I remember just like everyone's asleep. I was like run through the house to wake up mum and dad to tell them about a person they don't know or don't care about <laughs> just won a bike race in Paris through Bay. I was like, Stewie won. Stewie. Stewie won Roubaix. And mum was like, that's great, but we don't know who Stewie is, you know. Do you reckon we could get his jersey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then so then from there it was like, okay, and then the first time I did it was just like really hard and then I think I just sort of, I think just from there, just sort of every year I went back, there was some good memories and I guess it was uh, was the Mitch. Mitch was a big factor into, into falling in love with Rubai, but I think it was when, well, it was really when, when you won that, you know, like we'd had it done a few years before that, but I guess it just never really... I was really into it, but it was like, fuck, when you won, it was there that year. It was just so special. Um, that was a, that was just an unreal day in general. Wasn't it? <laughs> and uh, so I think that was just one of those things you sort of like remember those memories. And not many people have great memories of Bay because it can be such a hard race. But to have like one or two great memories in Bay is enough to keep you believing that you're going to have a nice day there. You know, like, because it is possible. And, look, it, it's a lot of the time it, it, it cannot be, but uh, I think there's, if you had a few opportunities there, we are, actually, I've had a nice day. I've had a day there that it's all gone well and it's all gone. And Maddie won the race and it was a great day. So I think that's why I'm still really like that race because it's it, it needs a lot of combinations to, to come together. But when it does come together, oh, man, as you saw on the weekend, people are just in awe with that race. Eh? Like, it's just so gnarly. Like, every person you, you talk to, like, Spoke to my family, like my whole family sat down and watched it from start to finish. You know, my nana, my cousins, they don't watch cycling at all, but they're just like, this race is just ridiculous, you know? So it is just such a special race that way. So take mechanicals out of it. What were your plans? Because you you looked pretty comfortable when uh, before you had troubles. Would, do you reckon you would have been with Gianni and then just when he had his mechanical piped him and solo into the Valadon? Yeah, oh, that was the plan. Yeah, I think that would have happened for sure. No, I think it's... It's one of those things, isn't it? Like, I haven't made the breakaway of Roubaix. I've tried a couple of times, but this year I made that split, which was good. Um, look, I was pretty, I was feeling pretty good. Like, I was pretty comfortable. Um, hadn't done too much yet. I uh, wasn't panicking about those couple of three guys away because it was still quite early. We still had a big group, and especially when Luke Rowe come back. There was no Sky guy in the front, and they had three guys in our group. So. Yeah, I was sort of like looking looking forward to that opportunity, I guess. Um, it's a hard, hard opportunity to make and um, it was there. So who knows? Like in the end of the day, there was – if you look at the guys in the breakaway, there was a lot of those guys in the top 10 and top 15 of the race um, in the end. And you don't – you eliminate those big efforts that the uh, like Van der Poels or Van Arts make, which doesn't really like suit me as much and I'm, I'm sort of in front of the race. So that was my plan, to have a two-minute buffer going through – all those really hard sections, mm. um, by the time they get to you, they've used up a lot of energy and then you're sort of playing an even even game at that point. Um, so who knows? Who knows? It's it's, it's one of those things. It's, it, it's a nightmare, Jonesy, if you start going through all the situations of what could have been. But 
it is what it is. I'm happy that I put myself in the race. Happy so I gave, me, gave myself an opportunity and um, gave me another little, little, little nice little taste that maybe it's maybe it's possible. And um, I'll, I'll keep showing up until uh, till we can do something there. Well, at least with Maddie, it, it's like, mate, good things come to those who wait. If I have to wait sixteen fucking years, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Maddie's got to <laughs> <I don't> <laughs> As long as it's not sixteen more from now. Yeah. <laughs> when when did you night for you, Manny? Um, yeah, I think like early on, I guess the Tour de France is the one that you know as as a as a rider in Australia and, and I wasn't really sure. I don't think that Roubaix was really on my I liked racing in Belgium when I came over as an amateur. Um, and then I did my first Roubaix and I just remember all the staff and everybody else saying, oh, this is going to really suit you. You're going to like this. And, um, you know, being flat helps. Um, but I wasn't sure. I wasn't convinced for a while. Probably the first three or four years I was just getting my ass kicked and people were winning by, I was 25 minutes down every time and people going, yeah, we're going to be good at this. And I was like, what I reckon. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, I had a bit of a breakthrough. And like Durbo said, you just get those little glimpses and it's not every year, but every now and again, I had one year, um, I think, um, I can't remember who won, but I was with Stewie at the end and we were only within about two minutes of the winner two and a half minutes and I had a puncher on the second last sector, came back. So still feeling strong after 250K and that was kind of like, whoa, maybe. And then it kind of snowballed from there. And, and like Durbo said, you have one year you get a good result or, it's, or, you know, you just get that little bit of hope and then you have a couple of years where you get your ass kicked again. And um, and also, yeah, just seeing those other guys that, you know, that every now and again there's a podium with – people that you consider kind of normal rather than the freaks, the Cancellaras and the Boonans. And you see these normal guys just ending up on the podium and you're like, well, if they can do it, maybe I can. So that's kind of – and I think that's for everybody. When you when you look at Milan San Remo, you look at Flanders, there's not really any normal people end up on the podium. They're all freaks. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's you right. Reckon? Oh, Don't yeah. You, no, you know, I guess pretty – They're, they're, they're freak. The, <laughs> yeah, you, no, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah. The end of the day, Flanders is normally going to have have the the, the guns of, of that that year mm. on the podium, yeah. or even if it's somebody you didn't expect, they've shown before. You know that it's going to be a pretty pretty uh, standard. But Roubaix, you know, look again. We've got a what is it, Florian Vermeersch, twenty two mm. year old. Yeah, everyone knows he's strong. He's done some good races this year. And now he's second in Roubaix. A um, couple of other guys in the top ten there, strong bike riders, but but you know they've they've had their breakthrough performance. So I think it it's nice in cycling to have that. I mean, it's a bit like it's a bit like the breakaway winning. That's why you stay in the sport because otherwise it's just the same five guys winning all the races. The the coolest thing about your Roubaix win is there was like four years within the Green Edge team where we we'd had Stewie, we knew how big Roubaix was, but. Oh, to be honest, like, and then we had, um, was it Kuklia ran six? Remember the? Year I before? think the year before, actually, yeah. Year before. Yeah. And Langeveld was top ten one year too. Yeah, but there was always in the back of your mind going, "We're never going to win this. this <laughs> we're never going to win." <laughs> I hope we do, but we probably won't. We and haven't so, got a fucking chance. That's not what you were saying, Jonesy in the bus. <laughs> no, <Nah. laughs> but, but no, nah, mate. I, I've openly told people that day <laughs> you won it. When you were in the break and we're at this uh, restaurant, I'm there with my mum and uh, my mum's getting all excited, going, oh, Maddie's in the break. I'm going, fuck, pipe, pipe down, mum. It's a TV <laughs> attack. He's broken his arm. They'll catch him and, you know, burn and all that. It's, well, sorry, but he'll get piped. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I was just telling her. She goes, Ma oh, geez, that's a bit negative. And I go, mum, I'm just <laughs> I've done many of these races. You come over here on a holiday. You don't know what you you're don't know. About. You don't Just know. pipe down. All right? <laughs> Just call the jets, and then when it, when it got close, and we're in that velodrome, and and Bannon gave me his bloody press pass, and when and when the announcer, you, it was the car for elaborate when you fell off the back, and then the announcer's gone round, he's gone, who's gonna win? And he went through all the names, he didn't mention you, and everyone was cheering. I thought, oh well, even the announcer's fucking good enough. it's done. And then when you got back on. I started going, what the fuck is going on? I'm freaking out. So I'm getting lenses and shit. Because normally you just rely on the news feed or the ASO and you just get the post race like Durbo's hair shot. You know, it's easy. <laughs> then I've got this panic going, fuck, he's coming in the same. <laughs> he's coming What's this? Clean and lenses. lenses yeah. Fucking... Oh, yeah. Sorry. That looks a bit cruel. Lens clean. <laughs> yeah. And so then 
when you won it, like that was it, it's easily top five days of my life in oh, terms I, of I've never, but I've never had a reaction of just I could not control my shit because <laughs> it was like even to this day you watch the video I still can't fucking believe you won it. I still the story and everything it's still like is so unbelievable. It's like something out of a fucking Hollywood script. And then you get all these blokes going, no, I backed him. Yeah, I got him at 201. You're like, ah, oh, shit. I could have made some good butts and burner on the back of it as well. If I only had to believe, you know. Well, <laughs> so I, I put a, my hand up, mate. I that was a somebody who, who, who thought they had actually made some money and they didn't press the button the second time to confirm the bet. Oh, so no. Celebrated the win, went to bed, woke up the next day and went, oh. <laughs> Like in the basket that wasn't confirmed. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> and I'm now hung over. Yeah. Uh, that, no. that day was epic though, 2016. For some reason, like everything seemed to like work. Like everything, everything that could have happened in Roubaix, winning, big crash, <laughs> when you're from when you're not from Europe, families there. Everything happened that one yeah, year. Yeah. Like my my yeah. dad was there. Your, your parents are there, there Jonesy. Yeah. Yeah. My, my dad, wife and my mum yeah. and my brother were there. They were there. all there. Like everyone yeah. was there. And then Mitch had that horrible, nasty crash on Arenberg. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I hope Mitch isn't watching like, this bit. <laughs> it was all perfect. It was all perfect. Yeah. Um, but that was but that yeah, was, was the, just... that was the weirdest part about the celebrations that night because everyone was obviously worried about Mitch, but you've you've obviously won Bay, so it was sort of like. You just want to wait until you know how mm -hmm. he's traveling before you can really let rip. And mm -hmm. then, um, yeah, I just went straight into, geez, I better not fuck this video up. <laughs> I was, and, and I was freaking out, like, when I was saying to Matty Wilson, did you have the camera on in the car recording? Because if he missed that, I've had many of those where you don't get the celebration shot. And then when you, you watch it back and you're like, it's all those – different elements that come into it that you see the reactions and what it means it's like even to this day it's never going to get old because it's it's just fucking epic there's no other way to describe it it's i it's remember epic. i remember when you uh you were cutting it up jonesy and you're you're in Girona, and yeah. um you're like all right okay i think i'm ready boys i think i'm ready you know come around uh we'll, we'll have a screening you know so <laughs> yeah. we all we all went over to jonesy's house uh, one evening it was like well probably a couple of days after Roubaix. We sat down, we had popcorn and everyone was sitting down ready to watch this video and Jones just put it on. And then after it's finished, he's like, look around the whole room, just everyone's just like wives, <laughs> girlfriends, just oh, yeah. bawling their eyes out, man. And everyone was just like, Jones like, good, good, huh? Good, because you'd probably seen it a couple of times. You weren't crying and we're all just like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it yeah. Again and, yeah. It was so good. Some music, awesome. Jonesy. Some music. Bloody out of music. Time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Mm. It's so Jesus. good. I love the, the. I just love the Wilson. What an idiot! You know when he attacks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the scene. That was the scene we put in all for one. I don't think that made the backstage. Nah. But when we uh. deep dived with all for one, because when you're doing backstage, you've got time limits. So I cut that and had it online the day after Rubai that night. But with um, there you oh. go. There's Kenny. There it is. Oh yeah, that's it. Man, the old man with your stone, Matty. Bloody that's hell. fantastic. Well, Passed well, around that, a bit. They were filming GoPro Vision, the old man and Kenny, and they almost had a punch on with the coppers there. You remember yeah. that, Bills? Because oh, they wouldn't let them onto the course. And Emu's filming it, and Emu started arcing up, going, no, you're a fuckhead, mate. <laughs> <laughs> to the French cops. I'm like, what, what, what do you think you're doing? Like this bravo Aussie comes in like, you know, French cops, I can just tell him where to go. Mate, he's like he didn't get his head. Yeah, he didn't get his head kicked. <laughs> he doesn't oh. say police. He says Jean Don Marie. He's like, oh, they're just this fucking thing. Starts with yeah. G, you know. Like, they're the yeah. police, mate. Yeah. <laughs> You're a fuckhead, mate. Uh, he's got it all on his little GoPro stick. You just see this finger like <laughs> coming out of the side. My, my old man was giving bottles because they, yeah, my dad and your dad were together with Craig Geeter as they were doing the sectors. Yeah, so the greatest day of, of my dad's life. He's a massive cycling <laughs> fan. He loves Perry Bay, and he got to do the sectors. He got to see Maddie win. Like he loved it, and he was so. We came off. I remember coming off one sector early on in the race, and I could see Dad. And we turned left off the sector. I could see Dad on the road holding a bottle, and I was like, "Oh, sweet!" So then I, I, uh, I was behind Sargon, and 
It must have been quite deep into the race where it was kind of at that point where everyone's desperate for a drink and it, you sort of just swan yours or understand that and they're giving a bottle to another rider from a different team, whatever. And Dad's holding his bottle and Sagan goes to grab it and Dad just goes, yoink! <laughs> just straight away from him. <laughs> and then Sagan's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I took it. And then I went up to Sagan and I was like, that's my dad. <laughs> I, I did that to Valverde once in the first year of Greens. I didn't know that you could give bottles to other teams. And it was on a hot climb at the Vuelta. And he like reached out for it and I did the same thing, like lifted it up so he didn't get it. And then quite quite afterwards goes, mate, what are you doing? Go, oh, should I be giving it? He goes, mate, if they're fucking thirsty, just give him one. Nah, fuck <laughs> you guys play harder than we do. Yeah. No, not our team. <laughs> but but I think you got the set. You're getting back to post race Roubaix celebrations. I think yours was done properly. Just pure shock, you know, shock for thirty seconds, and then when it kicked in, the the hands yeah. go up. That's the customary. Let the Swannies come in. That's the cue. <laughs> and then Durbo's teammate reaction was perfect as well. The two hand head shake. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Baby it's rattle. It's 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 Understand me. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So I did my kids. Do yeah. not do that again. That's it. I, I did a, I did a high jump over the barricade to get in there as well. I just sort of ran up and just jumped over the barricade. And going in. And just going in. I'm running around looking for him. <laughs> and Sanard's there all sulky and boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, funniest, the funniest was it was Fabian's last Roubaix and he binned it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. himself. We talked about that, eh? Hey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw that live. That was fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> to clear that up, to clear that up to the listeners who didn't, who didn't see it, he didn't crash on a cobble section or in the Arenberg or something. Oh, he no. rode into the velodrome, his final rebay, and he rode around the top of the velodrome to give a, a goodbye lap to the crowd, and he just hit the pedal and locked it up. <laughs> Slid down into a puddle. puddle. And it was the into only puddle. puddle. It was the <laughs> only puddle. For 800k, <laughs> and his <laughs> ass went straight in the middle of it. <laughs> oh, it's great. Oh, Talk, it talking so about great. puddles, I want to ask Maddie, did you do 2002? Did you I do did. Uh, oh, This is my whole bloody speech to you guys that you wanted to be there, you wanted to do it. Yeah, no, um, two, 2001 and two 2002. Went. So, yeah. Carnarvon one and uh, Museo. So, mm-hmm. I can ask both of you now, then, Durbo and Heyman, gun to your head. Wet or dry, Rube? Dry. Really? <laughs> I reckon it was way more fun in the wet. Do you reckon? I know what the pars would answer. I, I've already told the team I'm not coming back to Rube unless it's wet. <laughs> no, I reckon yeah. dry. I think, and I think Durbo's now at that that realization. I think the first couple of years I thought wet, just because it's chaos and you got more of a chance. But uh, I think Durbo's at that realisation that he can do it. So he wants to reduce the the lottery of it and uh, a dry one's probably the way to go for Durbo too. But, um, but imagine doing it in the wet. I imagine don't have to imagine. imagine you, I don't have to imagine. Imagine, we, we did. imagine if you won it in the wet. I mean. Yeah, well, it's still, I don't, like, I don't imagine really care if, you get if it's your day. sunny and tailwind the whole way and I win it. Like, you I wouldn't like, oh, this, 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 this conversation's going nowhere. <laughs> You want a different oh. answer. Yeah. Down to your head, Sam. Dry, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would, what I would say is my hands are in the best shape they, they have ever been for Roubaix, and I reckon it's because of the mud. It just there was a just the cobbles are a lot softer. Like if you, mm. so I was saying like it's it's a lot um, nicer to ride across muddy cobbles because it's actually just there's just dirt there's a lot of dirt in there and when it's dry you do hit a lot of the stones but when it goes wrong in the wet you just have no control like in mm. the in the dry you can sort of save it if you if you fall off the hump you can sort of save it but if you when, when you are in the in the in the wet you it's all good it's all good it feels quite smooth and you're in the mud and it's fine but then as soon as you just get snagged you're off down and you just have no control over the bike and the bike just takes you off so I think that's why I would like it dry because you you've just got a chance to re-correct if something does go wrong. Um, but in the wet, you just you just don't have that chance. I had this image in my head the night before, like I was thinking to myself, okay, what's it going to be like tomorrow? Like what to expect with 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 the weather, with the, how how it's going to be a ride on wet cobbles. 
muddy cobbles. And I, for some reason, I had in my head that we were going to come into the first sector, 150 guys at 50k an hour, and the moment our wheels touched the cobblestone, the bunch was just going to go, Phew, and just there was going to be 100 bike riders down. Mm-hmm. For some reason, that's what I had in my head. I was like, this is what it's going to be. And as we got close to the first sector, I was, I was, I was with someone next to someone, Mickey Shah, I think, and I was like, here we go, here we go, like just <laughs> ready just to crash. I was and sitting then on I got, the couch eating popcorn thinking the same thing, going, oh, here we here go. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> and like, as slippery as it was, and difficult as they were to ride, they were they were easier to ride than I thought they were going to be in that. And I mean, I, admittedly, I didn't do a considerable amount of sectors, but the sectors that I did do, yeah, you don't have, when shit hits the fan, you've got no control, but up until that point, you have control, more control than I thought, anyway. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We we made a call there to go and ride the wet cobbles the day before, and I was a bit like, you guys weren't sure. You weren't definitely going to ride them. And I was like, I don't know if I want to scare the shit out of you guys or get a bit of reality that, you know, they're going to be wet. And it's different if – I think probably the most dangerous is when half of the cobbles are wet or there's wet mm-hmm. sectors in the middle of them. But when it's just like that all day. Um, so I don't know whether that was a good call or not, but I think, yeah, the day before just – having a go on them and, and having a bit of an idea what they were going to be like, whether that just put more. I think like, like, like Sam said, it was like you, they were rideable. That's it. Like we just would expect, we have never in the wet, we've never done a wet Roubaix 20 years. You just expected everyone just as soon as you hit the first section, even if you're going straight, didn't touch the brakes, you'd just be down. So yeah. I think the, you, that it is rideable. They, they were more than rideable for sure. Um, yeah. So I think that was a good little thing to do because you sort of just go, oh, yeah, actually, they, they are rideable. But, I mean, the the weather the night before was like, <laughs> man, it was just – it was horrific. Like, <laughs> you, you, know, you, were, you were like – there was like a ghost in your in your hotel room. It was like <laughs> – and, uh, and we looked outside and there was like – the buses were like having a hard time staying up. You know, there was just like this – like the rain was just driving in from the side. I was running by myself. I had to sleep with the light on. Was that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and Jack had the window open. We're both leaning out the window and we're just looking out there just going, oh. and we just kept doing like <laughs> sighing, just like, uh, how are we going to do it? Oh. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 got in, we got in the lift with Phil Gilbert and he's the last winner since Roubaix was on in 2019. And we got in with him and he's just like, we were just sitting there and he's like, you ready, boys? And we're like, yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, I don't want to do this. And I was like, and we're all just like, yeah, I'm not sure about it. And we're just thinking like, the winner, he's won this bike race. And he's just <laughs> he sitting here going it. like, I don't know if I want to do this, you know? And you're just like, oh, my God. So I think in the end it wasn't like it was everyone, everyone rode, every, it, was a lot, it was slower, you know, it was a lot mm-hmm. slower. Everyone gave everyone room. Um, there was big gaps in between riders. Uh, man, didn't even worry about. It. We had to ask the. We wanted five hundred meter barricades on the Arenberg because we're going to go in there with a hundred guys for a max sprint. There was going to be crashes everywhere. Man, I don't reckon the group was bigger than twenty that went in nah. every time. Whatever group you're in into Arenberg. So that's the thing with the weather. That's the only good thing about the wet is that just like after the first section, you're pretty much in a group then, and unless you yeah. get a mishap on mechanical. You're in that group and, and you might change groups, but yeah, yeah. it's like it's way <laughs> yeah. less stressful because yeah. like I've done rubes before that you just like, you get through the first section, it's like a video game, you're like bang, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. okay, got through that one. And then your speed is so high and you come into Arenberg with 100 guys, full tilt, sprinting into the like, Arenberg. Like that is the only gnarly bit about the dry because when it is dry, everyone's motivated and also you eliminate a lot of people in October when everyone's like, a lot of guys are like, I'm just over the season. It's piss mm. and rain. I'm kind of done with this. Where an April dry Roubaix, everyone's up. Everyone's motivated. Everyone's ready to go. So there was some like benefits to that too, you know. I think also the, the women's race the day before showed that not everyone just falls off if they touch a cobble. I mean, it was yeah. pretty, pretty yeah. spectacular race and like... Um, pretty awesome race to watch their, their first event and they also the, the crashes too most of the crashes in the bunch in 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 the men's race were on the on the roads on the lead in mm. but the big crashes where more than one or two guys went down and any crash on the cobbles it's really only one maybe two or three guys go down and then everybody else gets around it so 
the woman's race was awesome. I thought, like the mm. first through bay and man, the baptism of fire for them, wet. <laughs> like they, and they they had it like you, you said earlier, Maddie, that it's the cobbles all are worse when they're half wet, half dry. You don't know what yeah, yeah. Sick is going to be. At least on the Sunday's race, we knew that every sick was wet, every sick was muddy. They had the the horrible condition of this sick is muddy, but this one's dried and. That's why they, I think they had quite a few more crashes than what we did because of that. Yeah. But the race itself was spectacular. Lizzie Dignan was just like, her skill it, it was, was unbelievable. It was shit that they didn't do the coverage for the whole race. I like, know. That was half yeah. assed. Like, just yeah. do the whole lot. Like, just yeah. rip the burnout off. Do it properly. Don't mm. just come in and just do the last 50K because the best shit's at the start. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Like, um, yeah. I've got a tech question for you, Matty. Everyone was talking about the uh, Vanderpoel shoes. You know, they stay pure yeah. white. And yeah. it was, he's using that spray, you know, that waterproof spray as well. Why can't yeah. we get some sort of tech where you can have the spray on the front of your kit or even on your glasses so that when on you have money shit like that good. and it just just falls off? I'll um, look into that and get back to you. I'll put it on my list. All right. <laughs> Do you know what else would be good for the glasses? Although, and I, I have yeah. heard rumors have been in the works, although it'd be terrible for the environment, is the tear offs. <laughs> yeah, the tear offs. Yeah, like so you just them put them in your back pocket. Yeah. And, the, and then put yeah. them in the, the compost out the back. In the waste zone. Don't, in the waste zone, yeah. Doesn't our, don't our glasses have the ability for that? I think there's some lenses. They do. Little, they do little, have the, hole, yeah. little holes on the side. So. You're right. Yeah. But for some, I don't know why we haven't got them. I think they were still developing them, maybe, or something. Yeah. But. Yeah, yeah. It would, that, that would have been good, tear offs in the mud. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, need something like that because if Durbo's going to win it in April and it's pissing down rain, we need all that work. Yeah, on or the puts the eye drops in before the race because. Yeah. 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 I, well, I, did, I, did, I did lose my I did lose my glasses. So in the end, uh, if I had them on, I probably would have been a bit better. I was taking, I was, you know, putting them on on the sector and then squirting the water and then clearing them off and then, you know, taking your hands off on the cobbles is not something you really want to do. But, um, no, we definitely need to work out a different way because I was uh, blind. Turbo, are these yours? Are those the one? You still got them. Uh, they? I think Someone they're gave them Chris's, to me. But I did lose a pair, so I could claim them, but they're not mine, but I'll take them, though, if you want. Oh, okay. No, they're not Chris's either. Someone, there's They might be mine glasses. I don't know how they would be mine because they did come off my head unless someone's returned them to a swan year Somebody returned them no. to... I'll I'll tell I'll tell you. Oh, guys they are exactly mine. How it went down. <laughs> if someone's returned, you want to listen? If you'd like to listen, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Would yes. You, would you like Sam. to know? Yes. So, <laughs> so they're mine, are they? No. <laughs> so, Swanier from Bingo gave them to me in the second feed zone and said, "Your one of your riders dropped these." And then I took them to the bus, and then I asked everybody on the bus who's multiple were. times, multiple times, and everybody said no. Except for Dumo, who said, no, no, they're not mine. I've lost mine. Well, <laughs> perhaps these are... They're not mine. I lost them. <laughs> what I have no, in my hand is found glasses. These are found ones. So no, they I, I lost actually mine. are my glasses because I, I wore pink know. lenses. They are wore pink lenses. <laughs> they are mine. These what are the was, glasses you lost. What was freaky is the guys that were riding without glasses and they get to the finish and all the mud has dried, but their eyes have been weeping. The they look like those... Yeah. You know those miracle statues of Jesus that yeah, cry that yeah. people go, oh, it's a miracle. He's a rock man. <laughs> Why yeah. is he crying? Yeah. I, actually, two uh, things happened. I threw my jacket 15K in too, thought I'm never getting that back again. So like, I was just real careless. Though. I put all my kit on thinking I'm going to throw all this stuff and I'm not getting it back. It's the last race of the season and they're going to be a lucky fan. And I couldn't – the fans didn't want it. They gave it all back. <laughs> got my glasses <laughs> back. Got my both my rain jackets back. So I was like, well, wow. it was a lean year for wins, mate. <laughs> and then I and, and then I jumped out of the car and said, "Put this on." Yeah, so I got rid of that been, too. You've been bitching and moaning about being you cold. were moaning about. Oh, I'm really cold. Oh, oh hey, how how, fil <laughs> how filthy <laughs> was the bus, buddy? After the finish, uh, it, it's yeah, always a shit show. But geez, I was yeah. Durbo rolled right in right. and said, uh, "I'm off to the showers." And then he stood around for about 45 seconds, got hosed down and went, no, I'm just going to go in the bus. I'm too cold. Um, the, no, I think most people got hosed down, didn't they, before they even went in the bus? You um, couldn't. It was just caked on your Jonesy. Like, yeah, the shower you wouldn't do it. You have to have a high-pressure hose. Like, you just, it was just because the sun come out at the end and it just dried on you. So it was like, 
Yeah, you just yeah, you weren't going into a shower with that. Were you? you could literally do like the paper mache off the mm. off the face, you know, like uh, uh, so. Um, I've got I've got my bike here. So the, the the bike that I raced on Sunday, I've got here at home now because I the whole story. Long story. It. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, long story. I've got my Roubaix bike here at home, and I put it together yesterday. Um, not to ride it. I'm not going to ride it for a few weeks, but. <laughs> I uh, I pulled it out of the bike bag and the chain was the color of my hat, just orange rust. I was like, oh, better get some lube on that. So I lubed it up, put the wheels in, and then I went to spin the crank and the, the cranks literally aren't turning. It's just like the headset wouldn't move. So I had to call, call the team mechanic that lives in town here and said, mate, you, I've got to give you my bike and you're going to have to strip it bare naked and clean all the dirt out of it. It's There is so much shit in there. Uh, so, what a pain yeah. I think you can find YouTube videos on how to do that. Yeah, you can find YouTube videos. I, I, yeah, yeah. I once it's a rider watched in twenty twenty one, Matty. They don't do that shit. <laughs> I watched. I once went on YouTube to watch a video of how to do a podcast, and look how it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> how to ask good questions. Skip yeah. that bit. Yeah. How to do a run sheet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward silence. Yeah. It's, it's coming. It's coming. Uh, anyway. <laughs> what else you got, Bill? Done about yeah. an hour. Yeah, oh, that was good. I think more cycling stories. That's what people want. Old yeah. cycling stories. Last week, last step was a belter because George Bennett was up for, for the first time in about nine months. That makes a big. <laughs> that makes a big difference. If he's not yeah. depressed, he's got a lot of motivation. Uh, yeah. You know, when he when he we comes spend, in. Hot. We spend thirty minutes trying to get him going, <laughs> we, and then by the time we do, he's he's done. I guess, guys. I've uh, yeah, I've got that thing on. You know, that thing. I've got to go after about forty minutes. It's so, like no. almost on cue, 40 minutes. I was go. 40 minutes. Yeah. So, and this when is we try to organize a podcast, it'd be like, you know, what day works for everyone, and George would just fly that. <laughs> so, what, what's the plan well, for the potty now, Bills? That <laughs> it's off season. What's surely we get George up and about? Yeah, George, uh, George, is right. George is not here today because he's actually he's currently racing Milan Torino. Um, mm. But we thought we'd do a we wanted to do a, we wanted to do a wrap up of Perry Bay while it was still hot and he runs heads. Um, so George does Lombardia on Saturday, then his season's finished. So from next week on, well, there's no excuse why we can't bang one out. Every, I think every couple of weeks is good, you know, yeah. Because people time to watch and listen, and then, uh, but we'll be more regular. We'll be as regular as an irregular show can be. That's right. The fiber diet. Like, share, subscribe. Thanks for coming on, boys. Thanks, boys. No Great. Awesome. Thanks for having stuff. us on. See you, fellas. Oh, yeah.